You can now legally smoke weed in at least 28 states for recreational or medicinal purposes. Now this isn't even counting cities that just turn a blind eye to recreational marijuana use. But with ongoing widespread use, law enforcement is looking for a better way to test to see if a driver is under the influence. After all, you can't really collect blood and urine on the side of the road. Or at least not. No, you just can't. Until now, it's been difficult to measure THC with a breathalyzer. Why? Well, because this is a booze molecule and this is weed. Ethyl alcohol is easier to measure because it has a simpler molecular structure than delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, the primary psychoactive compound in marijuana. This hasn't stopped many companies from trying. After all, it would likely mean a financial windfall. But a group of researchers at NIST may have found a way to measure THC with the help of plot cryo. Plot cryo is the technique invented in 2009 for those puffer machines that smell you for explosives at the airport. These researchers use the technique to determine THC's vapor pressure. You need vapor pressure because that's how breathalyzers measure the amount of THC molecules in your blood based on your breath. More work is yet to be done before we can manufacture a reliable solution, but the researchers at NIST have made some important strides towards consistent marijuana breathalyzers. Reliability and consistency will be key, especially when your guilt or innocence depends on it. Or if you just got one because your buddy's dad is a cop and you're just at a party and hey, why not? You're bored on a Friday. What a rush, huh? <laughs> Earlier this week, DARPA announced that it awarded contracts to five research organizations and one company as part of a $65 million effort to support its neural engineering system design program. The NESD is DARPA's effort to develop an implantable neural interface between your brain and electronics. The effort is similar to Elon Musk's Neuralink, which is creating a neural lace. We talked about a few weeks ago. No, it was months ago. Yeah, this time flies. The teams are working on a mix of fundamental research and applied science. For example, Brown University is working on a neural grain sensor that would be implanted into your cerebral cortex and transmit neural and digital signals. Columbia University is working on a non-penetrating bioelectric interface to the visual cortex. Basically, instead of an implantable grain into your brain, they wanna lay a CMOS IC over your cortex. UC Berkeley is working on a holographic microscope that will help the blind see again or serve as a brain machine interface to control an artificial limb. And a team out of Yale is collaborating with rice engineers who have built a prototype of a flat microscope that will sit on your brain and detect optical signals from neurons in the cortex. The goal is to provide an alternative path for sight and sound to be delivered directly to the brain. So as we plan on colonizing everything from new planets to new parts of the brain, I just hope that we know what we're doing when we get there. It's a real carnival in there. Just, you don't know what's happening. Like you're throwing balls at the clowns and they're not falling down. What a rush, huh? In May, Hyperloop One engineers performed its first full-scale system test of controlled propulsion and levitation of a Hyperloop One vehicle in a vacuum environment. And this week, for the first time, we got a chance to see the footage from what they're describing as their Kitty Hawk moment. The test only lasted 5.3 seconds in a tube with a pressure down to about five pascals. And the sled only reached about 70 miles per hour, but they were only testing 100 feet of the motor. The longer the motor, the faster the sled can go. In comparison, the company is on the verge of a complete systems test at the DevLoop site in the desert north of Las Vegas. At this site, the company has nearly 1,000 feet of linear motor in a 1,640 foot long tube. The top speed of the test track will be around 250 miles an hour. The company also unveiled the XP1, a pod with a slick new paint job on its carbon fiber and aluminum aero shell that sits atop the levitating chassis. The XP1 is what's gonna be used for the upcoming tests at the DevLoop site. According to the company, about 200 engineers, machinists, welders, and fabricators work together to achieve this Kitty Hawk moment. And I have to agree, it is certainly a moment to be proud of. The company thinks it could have a functional Hyperloop system up and running by 2021. I'm David Manti. This is Engineering by Design.